the best way to rest, other than, of course, when we're physically tired, is a change of activity. Change of activity. When we are given to the same activity, it's becoming tedious. It, it is really when well, we really get tired. So change of activity, just like you were given to, let's say, overly left hemisphere of the brain driven kind of, right, where you need to be focused in, in charge, you need to be together, you need to make the right decision, whatever that is, speaking to your colleagues, speaking to your employees, speaking to your trustees, you know, like, and you come out of that, change the change of activity, you feel the tiredness build up. What would be this? Completely something opposite to that. This is why I said, like baking, working with earth, with plants, garden. My question is about my process. Um, as you remember in the beginning, uh, my I was I was struggling with my mind, so my mind was very active. But then. I decided to unleash the mind and and she calmed down. Now uh, another thing uh, emerged or now I can see another thing which is my inability to relax uh, like as a physical as a in a physical level like my muscles I'm always very tense. Um and I think that that's one of the reasons that the energy has some difficulty to to move in my body. Um, and even, um, I don't know, just an example of my daily life. I don't know what is what it is to fall asleep at night and wake up in the morning. I wake up every hour, every hour. So... Um, and I think that, and even when we rest in the end of the meditations, um, I can't melt immediately. So I, I stay there for a while and, and after a while I really can melt and completely shut down, which is the only place where I can do that. It's here after the meditations. But I would really like to, <laughs> in meditations and in my daily life, to, you know, okay, I'm going to sleep and my body melts in the bed and, and I really sleep and rest. So my question is, if you can guide me uh, into what I should do to relax more and, sur and surrender, because if... If I can't relax, I can't really... My, my heart is completely surrendered, <laughs> but my body is not helping. So how long, how long has it been, that inability to relax? And forever. Forever. Yeah, since my, I was in my mother's belly, because she was always very agitated. And uh, I didn't have a quiet... Um, childhood. It was because the work was always mixed with uh, family, so it, 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 we did, there were no boundaries between work and family. So I grew up in the factory of my parents, uh, <clears throat> and and there was also uh, all, always stress and yeah never i was never able to relax because at any moment so, someone could come and you know uh yeah, yeah. not very peaceful <laughs> of course what becomes the modus operandi what we got used to in itself create in itself creates a groove. So like, 
that's how we will we'll learn how to function. <clears throat> For example, if uh, we learn to function under stress, like as a repeated, let's say, uh, as a given, then it becomes almost like when there is no stress, we can't function. So this also, whatever is there getting programmed. So obviously you just need to be able to reprogram yourself. Reprogram yourself from that place where that has been forever. You see? Because relaxation is a natural state. It's a natural state in a sense when we are not threatened by anything, we are not in a state of, uh, of where we have to be alert, where we have to just... And the beauty of the... When it's in that elasticity of the nervous system is in whenever I need to, whenever I need to rise to the challenge of the situation or have you, I'm fully present for that. But as soon as I don't need to, I can fall back into that complete and utter restful state, completely. I think I mentioned that somewhere. It doesn't apply to you, but I will still bring this example. I only recently brought this example that, again, they looked for some extreme examples in the field of neuroscience, of how human body, human nervous system performs, and what is that real crucial factor that gives the possibility for rising to the, let's say, challenges that make one into another being. They made this. Obse they've observed the programs of U.S. SEAL Marines. It's an elite, as you know, probably aware, right? A program which only few people can complete, and to begin with, like to graduate. It's a selective process is already tough, but to complete to become a SEAL, right? And there's one interesting feature, and it's not, not ultimately in the way one is packed up, let's say, physically, and you know, because of course the training there is to to see how one performs under extreme conditions of pressure, but matters of life and death, nothing less, obviously. One interesting feature that those who are successful were those who always find any potential, any moment for complete and utter relaxation. Like they, like soon as there is a little break, they're already napping, relaxing completely. Because in the program itself, there's a deprivation of sleep. You, you, it's not like you have eight hours of sleep. No, get up, go, this, that, conditions where you have to endure also how you deal with heat, cold, hunger, all this. It's like... But one feature is that those who were successful in passing through were able to completely remain in and utilize every little tiniest window every little tiniest place to completely relax. And okay, we're not training here for SEAL Marines, none of us do. But it is something, something to life that you can also attest that simply places pressure on us, here, there. So we need to have, we need to develop that ability to fall back into that state of relaxation soon as we can in any given moment. But before you do that, you need to create space for that. 
You see? Your own, your own space. This is the, probably the first step. Like, for example, your own little room. Not coffee room, not library, not, not where everyone can come in and, and everyone's objects there. It's your room, your space. Space for recreation. Where, as soon as you enter, it is so designed, so laid out. And the fact that you are going there to recharge your batteries and relax will begin that Pavlovian reaction-like effect. You enter that room, boom. And you deliberately you don't do anything there. You don't even study there. This is why I said it's not a library. It's not a study. It's the room to chill out, literally. You know? It could be even designed in such a way, like, I don't know, Moroccan style. All these, many, many, these comfortable cushions and kurpachas and these, you know, mattresses filled with, right? Like, favorite objects and not to do anything. They're just to go there and chill, you know? No, whatever the preferences are, Create your own space, create your own room, room for meditation, luxury. Room where you go and retrieve, retreat from the activities of the day for meditation. So it's what requires is to change from that modus operandi, change from that groove. Because this inability to relax, right, this in at the Good Sanctuary, we've spoken to fear. He brought it out into the open, right? He spoke about it and we addressed the root cause of fear, which is all turns out in one primordial fear of non existence. And effectively speaking, it's a false fear. It's the fear which comes from. Uh, what we have briefly, even briefly spoke today, in terms of this uh, complete and utter identity with the physicality of this organism. So we think our existence is based on that. We literally conceptually are formed into believing that. Realization that that is not true is what addresses the root cause of all fear. That the relaxation here, this ability to relax, can only be retrieved if you actually do things which are relaxing. You see? Relaxing. Doing the activity which does not remind you anything where it is associated with tightening that kind of, you see? Like attending to the business, business meeting, this, that. You do that because that's what you have been placed in charge, right? It's a responsibility. It's what you're supposed to do, what you ought to do. But at the same time, um, this cannot be always the activity. So there should be activities which simply for the joy of doing that. Like we talked about earlier today, about doing nothing. But it could be anything that is, feels relaxing. Making the cake, making, you know, baking something. Working in the garden. Just making something, you know, like something in a workshop. You know, something. Whatever that is. Not that you need to now excel, perform. No, just there are different de degrees of relaxation. I don't know if there is a proverb in English, but there is something to the best way to rest, other than, of course, when we're physically tired, is a change of activity. Change of activity when we are given to the same activity, it's becoming tedious. 
it, it is really where we really get tired. So change of activity, just like you were given to, let's say, overly left hemisphere of the brain driven kind of, right, where you need to be focused in, in charge, you need to be together, you need to make the right decision, whatever that is, speaking to your colleagues, speaking to your employees, speaking to your trustees, you know, like, and you come out of that, change the change of activity, you feel the tiredness build up. What would be this? Completely something opposite to that. This is why I said, like baking, working with earth, with plants, garden, just doodle, take something, a paint box, you know, something which will just give you that what, when you will learn, relax actively. In addition to that of cre creating space for recreation. Like you may think that I'm like this and that, right? But I have to have that. That's, I have to have my moments throughout the day when I'm completely and utterly not involved in anything and just in my own space. It's very important. And not now, as the child is on the, on the way, right? As the baby is on the way, this will become very important as well for you. It will become very important. To have your moments, of course, it's like the proverbial baby sleep, mama sleep. Okay? So, like, golden rule of a thumb. All this is known to you, it's not your first time, right? <clears throat> but also to have space of your own, the recreation. See, so that, that doesn't come at the, at the expense. Of, so that it's fairly simple. And the decision as well, just you brought it out into the open as a question. It should be a decision on your part. I am going to relax and chill. I'm going to feel into that what gives me joy. That's it. Because that's fun. And I, yeah, I want to leave that. I don't want to wake up every hour at night. When I go to sleep, I want to sleep. So before you go to sleep, there are a few things that you can do, of course, to assist that at a somatic level. Right? There are a few things that you can ask. You can ask, you can ask Amrita, you can, you know, like this. A few things but like that supports sound sleep, make you easy to fall asleep. See? A little meditation on the heart, just like a prayer. It's a good thing to do. When lying down on the back first, not only this on the sides, but just on the back. Now it's maybe tricky because it's difficult, so you need to prop yourself up. <coughs> But always before you go to sleep, or everyone, is a good habit. Before going to sleep, to lay down, to lay on your back. And this is the condition when, it's a yogic posture as well, when both sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system neutralize because they fire at the very same time. None takes prevalence when we are on our back. And it's a kind of transcendental rest. It's not good to sleep all night on your back. That's not good. But before you go to sleep, just like in a Sharvasana, at the end of the yogic, let's say, asanas and everything, you lie down on your back and completely relax. So this is good before you go to sleep for... 10 to 20 minutes, the energy also, you will feel the flow of energy. And those of you in whom this is now active, it will be so apparent. I cannot go to sleep unless I lay down on my back because 
the spine need to move. It just way moves, like you know, moves. Just whatever that accumulated throughout the day, like the adjust itself. And then you go on the side and lull yourself into a sound sleep. To the left, you warm up the body and sleep will be more physical. Turn to the right, sleep will be more lunar. We'll have more lunar qualities, cooling. We'll promote lunar, watery dreams and like it will assist that. If you feel cold, if you feel like circulation problems, if you feel any, then on the left, you activate the solar channel. So it's a warming physical sleep. See? If you, tomorrow you need to perform the athlete, if, you, if he's having tomorrow something, he should sleep on the left side. See? So he's in the body. It fortifies the connection to the body. But I want to say this to you as a challenge, creative challenge. For example, try consciously to sleep if you want to reduce that physicality in the body. Reduce it, right? Sleep consciously for 12 days on the right side as a preference and see what happens. See what happens. The that what we spoke earlier today, this viscosity, this gravity that the body imposes will be greatly reduced. It's a lunar sleep, yogic sleep. See? Yogic sleep. But again, and or you can sleep like a pancake. couple hours on that side, then turn around. See? So it's all really, really based, or not not based, it's, it's all really depends on your decision. So there's nothing that prevents you from relaxing because it's not that you are who is relaxing. It's the way we are, the way we are wired. Rest and activity, rest and activity. This is, the, this is the dynamics of creation. Active phase follows the phase of rest. The phase of rest follows the re phase of activity. So that's all there is to it. Just tap into that. Tap into that rhythm. Okay? And don't worry about this past conditioning that reinforcing that oh, all my life I've been like that, all my life I've been like that. No, I haven't been all my life. All my life I have been consciousness. See, all my life I have been independent of all that. That's my life and it's eternal. Life eternal. It's very healthy to, re to contemplate on that. You know, like all the hurry, hurry what is it, like hurrying around uh, subsides. See? I have to hurry up to leave legacy behind me. I have to hurry up. I have to hurry up, do something. I have to save the planet, or I have to hurry up, do something. You know? This is all comes from a place of misunderstanding of how things are. Or, like Napoleon Bonaparte purportedly said, you have to hurry slowly. <laughs> he was known for that. And he was a great Napa, by the way. He would buffer all his generals. And he would retreat into his tent and amidst of the most like, you know, life and death situations, he just like, I need to have a nap. You know? He just goes in, boom, and for a nap. You know, so just start the program of reprogramming. That's what it is. Thank you, Igor. You're welcome.